So everyone that you've seen over the last week, get your diary out and have a look. So Joe Bloggs came in for um, bad guts and I told Joe Bloggs that they were to drink kombucha and eat kimchi. Is a kombucha class worth it if they came in physically? Maybe I could be sharing scobies with these people. The next person really wanted to know about gluten-free cooking. Now, I'm not a cook, but I know this person who is, so maybe I can affiliate with them. What content do I need for these people? And once it might be that at the end of looking at all of your people that you saw last week, you actually have a bun bunch of content that you gave them. You gave them recipes. You gave them all sorts of things. You know, you gave them visualizations. What did you give them? Because you could sell those as a package to your clients or as a program to your clients and create what they all need. Hello and welcome. Mentoring with Geraldine is a bite-sized practitioner podcast for naturopaths, nutritionists, herbalists and practitioners. This podcast responds directly to your needs, the needs of the practicing natural therapist. With interviews, herbal discussions, something business and something clinical each week, you'll get the variety you need and enjoy to stay motivated in practice. Hello and welcome to Mentoring with Geraldine and the Bite Size Podcast. How are you going? So today I thought I'd talk to you about creating content for your clients because you know, I did mention a few episodes ago about the fact that I don't have many recipes. I have some breakfast recipes, some lunch recipes, and some inclusions, exclusions for dinner. I say to people about, you know, if I want them, if they've got allergies or acne, I might say, I don't want you having any milk. But what I've discovered over the years is that when I say to people they can't have milk, um, out of the jug they will come back and they'll go oh I found this most amazing lactose free milk and I'm like well you know what it was actually the cow's milk protein I was trying to get you to avoid and now you've gone and bought that and I actually we talked about you having almond milk or or one of the others so over the years I've actually changed it and now I say to people no cow <laughs> and then they're like why can't I have the meat I'm like well there's growth hormone in the meat not because a farmer or anybody else has put it in there but simply because the animal is big and it grew really quickly to get where it is. So I have found it easier as I've gone on to rather than them coming back and negotiating about what they can and can't have, I just say nothing from the cow. So that means that I have to offer, offer alternatives. It's all very well saying you can't have this and you can't have that. And I don't want you having this and I don't want you having that. But if you don't offer alternatives, then they're not going to do it. They're not going to be compliant. Talking about um, compliance and how to get things to people to do things for you in the coaching course, in the practitioner coaching course, how to keep your clients. And that's really important that we know how to talk to our clients, how to create the content that they need and be able to give it to them in a way that they want to do it because they made that choice. They've gone through the buyer process, the understand or the not understanding, not knowing that they've got a problem, to understanding that they have a problem or an issue or something they need sorting out. So they've gone from not knowing to knowing to then starting to look and finding what it is that will solve that problem or who it is that will solve that problem or maybe a combination of those two and then deciding on you. So they've arrived at your doorstep. So they're already they're already in that action process. And so when you're in that action process, we have to go, how can I action this and make it happen? And we can't make it happen. We can hand over all the information on earth um, and it's up to the person to do it. And everybody's getting busier and busier and busier. It's so hard. I mean, you know, how many podcasts have you listened to lately? Unless you've set yourself time to listen to podcasts, you probably might think that you're behind. And then at the same time, you're thinking, well, I'm behind in all the other things because I'm listening to podcasts. That's what I like about podcasts. So you get to do other things while you're listening. But our buyer has gone through all of these steps to find you and they've booked in with you right? So all of the lead up to booking in with you, you've managed to do all of that, you've got them there, they're sitting in front of you. But if you say you have to do this, or you have to do that, chances are 
they're going to have a little bit of oppositional defiance disorder come out, even if they never had it before, and they will get home and they will do some of what you've asked. So part of getting somebody on board and changing the way they do things is making sure we have the swaps, making sure we have the alternatives. So rather than talking about um, milk and meat and everything, recently um, I had a conversation and this... Um, other podcasts that I know she's given up um, alcohol for a month she decided to give it up for a month and so she knows how much money she saved she knows how many calories she saved um, but then she was like well how am I going to do this and she said well how am I going to do this what am I going to do and I said well she said you know we go out we're part of what she does and her business is meeting people and she's very social so she said how do I do this you know when we're out people are going to buy me drinks and I said that's really easy um, instead of so you make sure that the people that you want to know, know, because at some point you're actually just going to start telling everyone. But right now, when you're thinking, can I do this? Can't I do this? We share with the person that's closest to us. So if we're out um, at a pub or wherever it is, and you know you go up to the bar and lots of people are getting drinks, and so you need a drink in your hand, then your partner said, do you want a drink? And you say, you have a code word like, my usual, please. And that way, the partner or whoever it is that's buying knows that those code words mean, I want soda, lime and bitters with a slice of lemon, because that looks like an alcoholic drink. So you've got ways of getting around things at home. It might be that you start drinking kombucha so that you've got the fizz. You're not going to be able to get kombucha in a pub. Um, but every pub does lime and soda with bitters and it looks like you've got a vodka lime and soda so it looks like you're still participating it's not quite the same as cigarette smoking where you give up cigarette smoking you can't go outside and puff on a um, biro or something but with alcohol and with foods we can swap them and a great way of reducing alcohol is to make sure there's always a drink in between sparkling water or something that looks alcoholic if you don't feel that you can share with the group that you're with and sometimes we don't feel we can share with certain groups of people we just think oh, I won't go you know because I'll want to drink but if everybody's prepped for it especially your partner who's buying the drinks especially if you're maybe you're both doing it then the drinks you have in your hand still look good and you're drinking those and it's wetting your whistle so that because a lot of drinking sometimes is I'm talking, I'm shouting over the music, I have to keep drinking to because my throat's going, I can't speak anymore. Um, so simple things like that, we swap it out, nobody knows. When I talk to people about giving up gluten and giving up bread, and so I have to have other options for them there. So what content can I create? Is it that I'm going to do a gluten-free cooking course? I might do but no, I'm not going to. But that might be something that you've thought about before. And so many people want to create gluten-free food. So many people want to create sugar-free food. And so these sorts of options for your clients, whether it be in the written word, whether it be videos, um, with how, you know, live workshops, how is it going to present itself, this content that your clients need? Are you handing it over to them in the appointment? Are you offering it for sale on your website or at your workshops? Is this, you know, an opt-in that they can have? You know, this um, gluten-free cookbook with videos, you know, instructional videos. Um, that's something that I might buy for my husband, for example, because he needs to watch someone. He needs absolute you know, he will follow the recipe to the letter. I will substitute everything and ultimately it won't look like the original recipe except it might come with rice um, because I didn't have the right spices so I used other ones. I didn't have um, condensed milk so I used coconut milk. I didn't have, so that's the sort of cooking that I do but my husband doesn't. So if I was, do you see what I mean? I'm just saying what are these alternatives and how can we swap out the things that we want our clients to do what are their options the milk one's really easy these days there's so many really good milks on the shelves in the supermarket you know all the almond milks I personally like an almond with coconut milk I mean 
five years ago that sort of thing didn't exist whereas now we have a massive options that we can suggest to our clients so it's really easy for them to swap things out but there might be other content that's not as easy for them that we can turn sorry there might be things that aren't as easy for them so we can turn it into content so that we can create for them so then we can share it to a bigger audience we can share it to you know a yoga teacher who does some meditation while doing yoga you might um, record some meditations that they should do during shavasana for example there are other things we can do that share you know, that what is this other creation and a great way to figure out that creation, a great way to look at it is to every single client that comes in. So everyone that you've seen over the last week, get your diary out and have a look. So Joe Bloggs came in for um, Bad Guts and I told Joe Bloggs that they were to drink kombucha and eat kimchi. Hmm. Is... A kombucha class worth it if they came in physically maybe I could be sharing scobies with these people you know we don't sell scobies it's a bit rude isn't it but we could certainly be sharing scobies with them if we're making our own Ah, oh, the next person really wanted to know about gluten-free cooking now I'm not a cook but I know this person who is so maybe I can affiliate with them so that they learn to do that form of cooking and so on and so forth. What content do I need for these people? And once it might be that at the end of looking at all of your people that you saw last week, you actually have a bun bunch of content that you gave them. You gave them recipes. You gave them all sorts of things. You know, you gave them um, visualizations. What did you give them? Because you could sell those as a package to your clients or as a program to your clients and create what they all need and they're only going to need parts of it some of them aren't ever going to make a gluten-free bread because they don't bread isn't part of their lives and that's the other thing it's you know when somebody becomes gluten-free for the, because they're celiac it's actually saying to them let's look at alternate food sources you know, we don't have to have a sandwich at lunch. What about a salad and protein? Let's just ignore the bread factor. It might be let's ignore the milk factor. My my daughter doesn't, she didn't get on with cow's milk. And now she doesn't drink any milk at all. So she's fine. She's got no milk going into her life. But she has so many other amazingly good foods that that's okay. So let's think about what content can we create from what we're giving out to our clients on a regular basis so that we can broaden the scope of content we can broaden what we're sharing and we can share it with more people so I'm going to leave you with that one you've got a task there if you want to undertake that task go back from the last you know maybe dozen clients and look at what resources did I give them how can I expand on those resources and how can I create more resources that I can sell package up program up um, or give to people or turn into a workshop what is it that everybody is really wanting from me within my niche group so hope you have a really good one um, you know if you've got all the way to the end how about that five star review if you haven't already um, and I really look forward to catching up with you on the next podcast see you soon thanks so much for joining me today don't forget to rate review and subscribe to the podcast for the weekly episodes if you'd like even more support and learning, then the Academy is for you. Here you'll find part two of the herbal discussions, more clinical learning and case studies to support your clients in practice. Bye for now.